Welcome to I Eat Vibes for Breakfast, hosted by me, Juliana Hale. Hello, and welcome to the third episode of I Eat Vibes for Breakfast. We have our first guest today, the amazing Kitty Cohen. <laughs> Hello. So you are a uh, psychedelic disco cowgirl elder emo amazing independent artist <laughs> so we start every episode with a tea of the day so usually i'm drinking a tea i forgot to give you the heads up so you would have some tea ready um i'm drinking a, a green ginger tea because your girl's nauseous what are you sipping on i am sipping on green tea with a little bit of peppermint in it I love it. I love it. I love a peppermint green tea. It's usually all I drink when I'm trying to branch out because I can't try a peppermint green tea every single episode. You know what I mean? <laughs> she needs more than one. Yeah, I my, my voice has been ill recently. I also went out last night. Oh, so yeah. I how was the show? That... Okay. Um, we're on a podcast, so it was good. I'm like a huge star star fucker. Can I say that? Can I cuss? You already did. So yeah, we're good. <laughs> okay. 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 Well, star fucker. Uh, it's not like spelled out that way completely. I'm a huge fan of them. Um, okay. they're like one of my biggest musical influences, to be honest, especially their like early stuff, like 2013 stuff mm -hmm. on their album, Miracle Mile. So I was interested to see like how the concert would be because I haven't seen them since 2018. Okay. Um, and that, you know, that was a minute ago, but it was, I was really surprising. Like the crowd was really young, which like Starfucker has been around since 20, 2012, 2011. So like, it's kind of interesting to see how much like they've progressed. Um, but it was good. It was really good. Being an artist, sometimes it's hard to watch shows and not just think about your own live set, which is like super narcissistic but like it's the truth so whatever no I I definitely agree I have the same thing and like it's hard to watch shows as an artist and also not think of like almost like what you would maybe do differently or I guess I experienced that like especially seeing shows in Nashville because there's so many like maybe less experienced artists per se and so I'll notice like when I'm watching them play they're just like looking away from the crowd they're like I I don't want to yeah I don't want to be yeah. here and it kind of stresses me out so I definitely relate like I try to have fun at concerts and not think about music but it's impossible exactly but it was it was good it was it was really good I had, can't remember the last time I like bought a ticket to like a G, just a GA ticket like so wholesome like I don't know <laughs> I feel like I've just been like I don't know I guess I've been spoiled these past couple years since COVID but I don't feel like I've had to buy too many like concert tickets and I was yeah. like you know what this is 25 bucks it's at Brooklyn Bowl which is like a sick venue in oh, Nashville no, so cool. so like, have you played there I yet? love it no I haven't and I don't know like when it's gonna happen but I'm so excited because I love their lighting rig I feel like we should put out a show there but we can talk about that another time I think that would we be should good. that would be really cool <laughs> all right so at Brooklyn Bowl if you're listening um <laughs> we're trying to we're trying okay. to have a show, so buck us up. All right, so our, our figurative tea of the day. Um, did you see Julia Fox's body bag dress? Yes. You did. <laughs> I did. Okay, the thing one thing about me is like I'm gonna ship Julia Fox no, no matter what. No, literally. I love that bitch. I think she is so fucking iconic. She doesn't care. Like, did you see her TikTok about she's like showing her apartment? Yes. <laughs> Dude. I literally like was so in love with her. I was like, you are such a real human being. And it's like, she's on the precipice of like saying things and doing things that are like not okay. But it's like, they are okay because she's simply just stating the facts. Yeah. Um, I mean, I thought it was crazy. So the, the bag was four pounds, four pounds, dude. Yeah. Like how, what is this made out of? I know. Is it just air? Is it inflated? I I, that's what I'm wondering. It has to be inflated. Can she put things in it? Like, did she put things in it? I mean, I I feel like, you know, she crushed it. She ended up in the news. Like, I feel like that's probably her goal. She's Why? giving so much of what, like, the early 2000s, like, oh, yeah. tabloids were, which I think that was such, like, a big part of my childhood I just remember my mom always talking about like JLo's married again or like whatever you know 
And like, I don't feel like we really get that today. It's like everything's just on Snapchat, which like I don't tr- I don't even have Snapchat. I don't trust the Snapchat news, but it is like you can't help but look at it. Snapchat news is insane. Snapchat is literally like the clickbaitiest platform <laughs> on the world. They'll just have a pic like right now. It's so crazy because like it's just like Kim Kardashian and Pete Davidson still and or like MGK and Megan Fox now. And they'll be like. I literally saw one today on Snapchat that was a Photoshop picture of Megan Fox next to Eminem and said, Megan Fox and Eminem relationship confirmed. And I'm like, you guys need to be stopped. (laughs) Dude, and also it's like, what happened with MGK and Megan? I'm sad. That's what I want to know. I mean, she she tweeted like, I can taste the dishonesty on your breath or whatever. Well, okay. I like I like saw it on Instagram that day, and I went to back to look at her on Instagram, and she her Instagram was deleted. Oh, she de- interesting. Well, she I guess her Instagram. She's like, I don't want to deal with this. That's why, like, I don't know. You can't get too wrapped up in celebrities' lives. It's oh, kind of yeah. crazy. It's like it's not like enough to just love someone's art or think someone's beautiful or, or they're, they're a good actress it's like let me i need to know like where they eat where they shit where they sleep who they're <laughs> fucking like we need to know everything i'm like just leave these people alone like they're still people they're literally like, just people yeah and <laughs> they like idolize any celebrity relationship they're like oh they're celebrities they're perfect their relationships amazing perfect like why i don't understand that yeah, speaking of they- celebrity relationships uh people are losing their collective Shatowski on the internet right now because apparently Kendall Jenner and Bad Bunny were seen like making out at a club and everyone's like leave them alone <laughs> Bad Bunny stays making out with everybody <laughs> I, think, <laughs> I feel like just, that's his thing he just wants some smooches yeah he's like I'm just trying to smooch I bet that's what it is they're just in the club he's like I'm just trying to get some smooches like I'm trying to kiss Bad Bunny <laughs> yeah I mean <laughs> um, go get it girl go get it <laughs> That's hilarious. Oh my gosh. I just kept seeing people like repost the Kendall Jenner commercial, like that old Pepsi commercial today, and being like, just remember this bad. But back to my my favorite celebrity, that's you. Let's tell me a little bit about yourself. Like what got you started into music? Where are you from? Give me the re So um okay. So where am I from? This is a good question. <laughs> I'm from Texas. I didn't know this was gonna <laughs> It's like technically I was born in St. Louis, Missouri. Like my okay. whole family is from St. Louis. Like they're not from St. Louis. They're from the south of Missouri. They're all like farmers. Um, you know, just humble, humble, humble folk. Um, but yeah, I grew up in Texas. My mom moved us to Texas whenever I was two. Um, so I grew up there and it was it was great. I mean, I definitely think that Texas has like a big influence on my music and my personality and just my vibrato, everything about me. I do think it, it is taken from Texas. I remember being younger. I was always so annoyed. Like, I'm tired of people calling me country and like, I don't like country like Wranglers when boys would wear Wranglers with their like Copenhagen in the back pocket. I was like, I can't wait to get out of this freaking town. But then as like I grew up, I was like, okay, honestly, like there's something charming about being from a small town in Texas, even though if it was hell in high school, because I mean, you know, you're like a bisexual kid with tattoos already at like 18 and like everybody thinks you're just a complete failure but then you go out into the real world and you're like oh, oh wait, wow I'm there's cool. yeah you're like there's a lot of people like me like you know like this isn't crazy like yeah. so um yes shout out texas great fucking place um i'm based in nashville now as you that's know where we met that's where <laughs> we met um yes we met over see. instagram like over a few Instagram, years ago yeah a few years ago we followed each other and i was like wow she looks so cool and then you messaged me and you're like wow you seem cool and we we're like we should hang out and then we found out we lived like 10 or 15 minutes away from each other and we we're like this is but it and it's been history it was like immediate our friendship i love friendships I like that like you just become friends so it's just so fluid naturally and then yeah. we both travel a lot you travel a lot so but when I see you, it's like we just pick up right where we left off. And that's what I love, because I feel like adult friendships, people can put so much pressure on friendships. As I know, we've talked about like you're just I love those friendships where it's like, OK, you have your whole life and I have my whole life. And like we come together, but we don't really have like these expectations on each other. to Like text me back like 
you don't even have to text me back like within the month honestly like if yeah. you call or text me like at any point it's cool like I feel like we just understand each other like that and I love that yeah I like that too it because I, I stay not responding to things I just get so overwhelmed and I'll like read you know I think everybody goes through this she'll just like read a message and you'll respond in your head and then yeah. you put your phone down and you're like like <laughs> yeah <laughs> I feel like you always call me back. Like you don't text. You're like, I'm going to call. And like, I'm cool with that. I like that. I'm such cool. an old lady. Like it comes to, when it comes to text messaging. I just, I first, first of all, talking to text is just always jumbles up everything. Cause I guess it just doesn't like my voice very much. I'm like a mumbler. Um, but then on top of that, I'm just not the greatest at spelling or articulating my messages. So I'm like, I'll oh, screw it. I'll just call her. <laughs> <laughs> I love it. It overwhelms me too, though. Like I have like 70 unread texts right now or something. And I, I don't know. I just yeah. I'm not going to read them. You're like, I'll get back to you. I'm coming back for you, baby. baby. <laughs> I'm coming back for you. Um, but yes. So I'm based in Nashville now and I love Nashville. I am so happy I moved here. So I guess back to kind of being from Texas, I went to school in Austin. Um, I did graduate. Yes. Proud Ooh. of you. Graduated. <laughs> um, and then even though I didn't do anything with my degree, I got a degree in political science. I was going to go like be a lawyer. And then after that, I was like, ah, I'm not going to do this. I'm going to go be an artist because that's what I'm <laughs> Two very to do. different things. But I respect it because I was supposed to be a doctor. I had like a bunch of scholarships and I was like, you know what? We're going to do music. So sometimes yeah. life has different plans. We can always go back to school. We, we're like 45 and we're like, you know what? I'm, <laughs> I'm going to go be a doctor. I want to be a lawyer. We could technically. Yeah. I, I we could we do, I don't we know why we would but we definitely could <laughs> I don't know if I'm quite frankly built for law school uh I much respect to everybody who can do that and go to school for that long medical as well but it's just not my vibe so yeah, my, my, one, my, my best friend a... is your stepsister's what Sorry. she's a lawyer and my sister's a pharmacist and I saw them go through school and I was like there's no way I'm doing music and that at the same time my sister's like walls were literally like wallpapered with notes while she was yeah. studying. And I'm like, oh, it's yeah, OK. Because yeah. in high school, I was always like, well, I'm just going to balance like going to college and doing school, uh, music and everything. And then I really thought about it. And I was like, one of them's going to suffer. I'm either going to suck in school or I'm really not going to finish doing music the way that I want to. So, yeah, got to pick. Exactly. But yeah, so um, what got you into now? music? What got me into music? So when I was in Austin, um, the guy I was dating at the time owned or was co-owner in a bar okay, um, called Scratch House. Shout out Scratch House. Um, it was like a very DIY bar. It was really cute, though. It was a good time. Great freaking music. Honestly, some of the best electronic music in the, in the city in Austin at the time. Um, and I don't know, I had just graduated and I had been like taking photos uh, for festivals because like my one of my friends at the time kind of was in concert photography. She was like, come with me um, and, you know, take these photos. We'll work for this uh, place called IWAX Films. So we went to like some festivals, took photos. I ended up going to Buku and taking some photos as well. And know. the whole time I just was like, I've gone to festivals. I've gone to music shows. I've been a fan. I've been a photographer. I've helped manage artists. But like for some reason, I'm not satisfied. Like even though this is like the job of my dreams, like why wouldn't I want to do this for the rest of my life? And um, I just kind of dawned on me that I wanted to be a musician. I was in uh, New Orleans at Buku and I got to take photos of Lana oh, that's that awesome. night which was like life changing. But all I could think about is how I wanted to sing on stage like her. And I was like, yeah, this is it. I'm going to really, really try with this one. And then honestly, the the, fir the first song was good and the video and everything just kind of came together that the universe was kind of spoke to me and was like, you know what, this is what you're supposed to do. Um, you know, it's not going to be easy. It's definitely not the path uh, often taken, but you know, this is what's going to make you the happiest. So I was like, all right, here we go. And then created Kitty Cohen, created the world of, of Kitty. And yeah, just kind of kept it moving. 
I love it. So I know that, as you just mentioned, you created Kitty Cohen. So tell me a little bit more about that, because I know Kitty Cohen is kind of like a character. So kind of give me that background, that inspiration. So, okay, Kitty Cohen is based off of Kitty Foreman from that 70s show. I love that. Originally, because that's the nickname Kitty. Yeah, so Kitty Foreman. uh, Mm -hmm. The her, 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 like, laugh. (laughs) I like laugh like that sometimes. So I and I'm just I think that's the vibe I gave off in our like group of friends. I was kind of the kitty foreman. Um, and then I was like, you know what? That's really cute. And then my boyfriend at the time called would call me kitten. Aww. And I don't know. It just kind of like became a thing. OK. Um, and then I was like, all right, so we have kitty. But what's the last name? And. uh my grandma passed away January of 2020 or no January of yeah 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 January of 2020 so right before COVID and when we went to her um like house to kind of go through all of her stuff and you know go through her records and stuff that we needed for when people pass um I noticed that my great grandma so my grandma's mom Mimi her last name was Cohen. Her her maiden name, or no, yeah, her maiden name was Cohen with a K. So K O E N. Okay. And I was like, that's really cute, Kitty Cohen. But then I changed it to a C because my name is JC. So Casey. I like, I like And that's that. how it came about. That's so cute. I love that. Well, RIP to your grandma, my condolences. RIP Lori Lee. Like I- almost like like that's part of her you know like she was almost they would like guided you to that that's awesome my real name is jc lee butcher i love that because it's so like it's very texas it's very texas it's very country i remember the first time i came to nashville the tsa guy was like jc lee butcher country star country music star <laughs> and i was like oh my god no. uh, <laughs> maybe it was a great feeling to come to nashville i'm sure he said that thing to so many people that oh. were dressed like me coming to nashville for the first time <laughs> yeah i did country when i first got to nashville but then i was like oh i i don't want to do this and i just like to this day anytime i'm like oh i do music and they're like where are you from i say nashville it's always like you're a country music star i'm like well no but <laughs> yeah I think that's like a vision for people that don't live in Nashville. Yeah. And like, then people that are very, because I mean, don't get me wrong. The country music world is very large here. Oh, yeah. I feel like I'm, since I've started, everyone has always tried to kind of be like, why don't you do country? You could sing country. You could rebrand. And I'm like, don't get me wrong. I can sing the hell out of a country song. It's like where my voice sits well, but I don't yeah. know. It's just not. That's literally me too. Like when I did country, I felt like I was like belting. Like, I don't know. It was very vocally easy. And I, my first manager was super, super connected in the country realm. And I, at that point when I signed on with him, I really wanted to do pop. But literally every single day he was trying to convince me to do country because he was like, I can break you in country easily. And then you just switch over to pop. And I was like, honestly, like, I just feel like I would feel so inauthentic. And I don't want to build like my artist image off of some fake sound just because I wanted to get famous and because like he was connected in the area and I didn't feel like I could go to like these country festivals and really enjoy myself and I didn't feel like I could like answer interview questions and be like who are your biggest influences and have me spout out some country names I don't know it just didn't feel right but yeah he did end up finding the artist for him (laughs) as you know the (laughs) tea that's the tea that decided to to do that and you know she's working on it she's working on the crossover so he, he found her he found her girl um he found his girl for that it wasn't me I was like I'm just gonna I want to be me I want to be authentic and I'm not just in it for for money well I think that that's gonna make you a lot happier in the long run Definitely. than to do I something like, I just that myself, just to like, be famous yeah like yeah. playing country shows and stuff and just like I just didn't think it was gonna make me happy really yeah I love it when like people like industry Mr. Min Mr. White Man with his suit and his fucking connections is like but don't you want to be famous I'm like that's so funny that you think I give a shit about being famous like I really could give two shits like Uh, have you seen the movie Babylon with Margot Robbie have you seen the movie Babylon with Margot Robbie I have not seen it no okay first of all a star I was 
this movie is really good okay it's very cheeky but it's very good um she has this line and she's like you don't become a star you either are or you aren't and i'm like that's facts i love that like, yeah that's true because isn't babylon like, is about like hollywood and whatnot right yeah babylon is about the like era of hollywood when they went from the the original movies like with no sound and then they started making talkies which are oh, okay, yeah. movies with sound and color um and it's what basically think, about kind of the crossover what do you think makes a star like so when she says that like what do you think like because i feel like you have star quality like what do you think like determines it? Uh, i think that Everyone has the potential to be a star. I think it it is something that everyone possesses. But I do think that some people like to be seen and heard and some people don't. Mm -hmm. And I think that to be a star, you have to have this magnetic quality, which requires you to accept being seen and heard. And, you know, it's like you can be a soft spoken individual. Like I think like Lana Del Rey, for example, is a very soft-spoken um, individual from like what I've seen in interviews. I'm obviously a huge Lana fan. I've already brought her up two freaking times. I love her. <laughs> also, the A&W song, <laughs> I fucking love her. She's a queen. She is a queen. She's so, a queen. So oh, God, I love her. Um, but she's like a soft-spoken person. However, when she talks and when she sings, I listen. I'm captivated. I'm drawn in. You know, there's a lot of people that are beautiful and talented and will do all the antics to get everything. But it's like, are they are they just adding to the noise or are they breaking through the sound? So I think that's like something that a star has is is they kind of shudder through all the sorry about that. They kind of shudder through all the noise and really, you know, make a statement. Um, they have something to say that's and stand that. apart from from the masses, from the rest of of everything um yeah so i think also stars are people who are very relatable um i see a lot of like i actually we're gonna get into this this might be a good segue like a lot of like people on tiktok and that are they're beautiful and they're talented and they're rich and they have all the resources but like there's nothing like that makes them any different from like everybody else I know does that make sense like I'm not trying to like hate I'm just saying like it's like it's it's like David Bowie like David Bowie is a star mm -hmm. you know yeah. like I don't know that's how I feel artists. about it because I feel like you and I have talked about like not everybody's an artist like not everyone who makes music in my opinion is an artist I feel like we're so quick to be to call people artists artists and I feel like there is a yeah. difference between a singer or a songwriter and like an artist because you have to have that vision. You have to have something to say. You need to, like, exist in a conversation of, like, how you stand apart. Like, you, you have to, you know, have a creative vision. And, like, I feel like, yeah, some people maybe don't have that. And that is okay. But, yeah, someone like David Bowie, he had something to say. He stood for something. He had a completely yeah. unique look, completely unique music. And there were other people during that time that also had successful careers but maybe weren't as, like, hard. Yeah. Yeah, exactly. Yeah, it's uh, I, I definitely don't subscribe to the idea that everyone who makes music or is a musician is an artist. Like, I think there are people who are considered artists who are very famous, but they are good dancers. Mm -hmm. They are good singers. But I don't think that there is any true artistic expression behind what they're doing. I think it is uh, like they're making hits. Yeah. And girl, don't get me wrong. Your bitch would love to chart. I would love to make a bag off of my music, like su a substantial bag for the rest of my life. However, um, I am more concerned with reflecting my art, like while I'm here, you know, I on this earth, I, I would love to, that matters more to me than making a lot of money off my music. And I think so. that'll like make you feel more fulfilled because we know that mental health is a huge issue among artists. And cause it's such a, like a high and low industry, like it, it's just, you know, mountains and valleys. So speaking of stars and artists, who inspires you? Um, I would say my biggest inspirations 
uh, for my music and also my aesthetic um, are definitely Stevie Nicks, uh, Florence Welch, Lana, um, Etta James, definitely Ella Fitzgerald, like older jazz singers are a big uh amy winehouse so i think those are definitely some some big inspirations for me i can definitely sense that in your music i totally love your sound you're so unique i'm actually genuinely a fan of you i know that we're friends but i listen dark soul is my favorite i don't like i really love disco lemonade i love all of them but i'd be bop into that i don't know if that means i have a dark soul like secretly and i'm just like driving down the road it does whatever but i love it (laughs) it does (laughs) it does (laughs) (laughs) <laughs> it's deep in there um it's called trauma <laughs> keep, keep her locked up what is um this like what is your favorite song that you have you know it's hard to my play. favorite song that i have is holy really okay what's the story behind it um so holy is a song about i think transcending um, things that have held you back, people, addiction, um, trauma, really everything I think that l- lowers your frequency as a person. It's finding the strength within yourself to rise above it mm-hmm. and not let it consume you um, and just kind of become, you know, the the leader of your life, you know, um, which sounds kind of corny. Because it is a cool song. And I don't think listening to the song, anybody would really gather all of that. But yeah, it's basically a song about, um, you know, if if you're the kind of person who you've been there for so many people, but then when you need someone, no one seems to be around. Kind of just instead of taking life as like, oh, I'm the victim. It's like, no, I'm holy. I'm above this. I have so much to offer and I can rise above it and just move on and shine and be a star shine bright and be a star star, (laughs) baby i'm gonna Uh, gonna listen to holy right after this now i'm trying to like listen to it with new ears i'm trying to yeah yeah it's a good song that's beautiful and your music videos are amazing i think that's one of like my favorite things that you do i hope that doesn't sound weird i don't know i feel like your music videos are just like so beautiful so what's kind of your process with that how do you creatively kind of create them where do you start so I think that music videos are something that are very special to me because I grew up in the VH1 MTV era of like there was a new music video every day and you like went on the family computer and like watched Lady Sovereign <laughs> or Linkin Park or whatever. Who Taylor Swift was was yeah. doing her thing by then. Um yeah, and I think that for me, the music kind of starts from life, like what I see in life. Like if I'm just kind of living and existing and see something that I think is really cool, or if I'm watching a movie and like life imitates art, you know what I mean? So if you see something beautiful and you're kind of like, you know, that would be a good idea, but then kind of make it your own. Um, I never really tried to reinvent the wheel. Like Ru- like RuPaul says, like you, the wheel, the wheel doesn't need to be reinvented. The wheel is fine. <laughs> However, it is important to put your own spin on something and not just completely, um, you know, copy or, you know, you can copy things, but at the end of the day, it's always going to turn out different. It's always going to become yours by the end of it. Um, so I really just try not to get caught up in being too different or too this or too that. Like I just am like, I love this. Kitty likes this this is a vibe. This is my vibe and I'm going to stick to it. Um, I think it has grown. I think at the beginning I was very like, I think a little sexualized. I think I was a little bit, uh, you know, fresh to the music industry and I didn't realize kind of what I wanted, but I think as time has gone on, the disco cowgirl era has, you know, the sun has set and I am very leaning into, um, like a lot of like Nirvana type stuff. I'm very into like grunge music, kind of that like indie sleaze aesthetic has been really uh, interesting to me. Okay. So I'm leaning more into my rock and roll roots, my I Southern Gothic vibes. The evolution. I think that evolution. sometimes audiences can really expect and like 
want an artist to stay stagnant for some reason, but I would think the most iconic artists have, like, evolved so much and explored so many different... Me too. ...avenues, like, even Taylor Swift, for example, but, like, Mac Miller, I feel like, is a huge one for me. I think all of his albums are so sonically different, and I think that's so beautiful that he really explored every sound. Because I also think, as a creative, I feel so drawn. I don't want to be pigeonholed into one sound. I have been trying to find more of like my lane because I've explored a lot of different sounds over the years. Like I've done the urban, the singer songwriter, the high, like very pop, pop, pure pop. And I'm kind of leaning into like pop, 60s pop, pop, kind of sound now. And mm -hmm. I, yeah, <laughs> I feel like people would definitely, I think it's important to find a niche, but I really love like artist development. Screw what other people might say. <laughs> yeah. Period. I mean, I do think that there are artists that they found their pocket and I really love it. Like Frank Ocean, I think, is an example oh, of yeah. someone who was always just so experimental with sound that it always has worked. But then you see people like Kendrick or like Rihanna, I think, is a very good example. I stay thinking that I'm sure I, there's a million reasons. But the reason Rihanna stopped making music was that she didn't get a Grammy for the Anti Diary album. Really? That exactly. album should have gotten a it, million grammys it should have won in a bunch of different categories and it didn't even get nominated i think really that's yeah. i did not know that because that's what it, it's a timeless album that album is still like constantly being changed. needed like, me oh needed me the song are you shitting me Dude, that song that is next level it really is it's amazing that, that whole is... album is next level her vocals on like higher love on the brain like people sleep oh. on rihanna as a vocalist People do. She's one of the best folk. She's amazing. She honestly, is. I love her. And she's a huge inspiration for me as well. Um, but Desperado by her, uh, that song was the first song that I was like, I need to start making music videos because I was into film before I got into music. I was like going to do stuff in film and move to fucking Hollywood and shit. But I it, it I'm good. <laughs> Different I get told I look like Scarlett Johansson almost every day of my life. So oh I'm like. God. Mine I'm is good. Sophie Turner, but not since like Game of Thrones kind of <laughs> ended. So that's actually been a nice relief. No shade to Sophie. She's beautiful. She's amazing. But I was getting like two DMs a day. Like, you look Dude, like it's Turner. just it's it's not that it's not beautiful. It's just like it's so funny that people can't just be like, you're beautiful or this. It's like especially with I just feel like I always get told I look like somebody else. Like it's oh, it's always someone. It's like Miley or Scarlett or just yeah. something. And I'm like, I'm really out here trying to like make my own lane. Could we just maybe let me do like, that. lay off the yeah. comparisons just, just a blonde, little bit literally you get compared to every single blonde that's ever lived their lives like literally. any blonde like literally one time someone was like oh you look like margot robbie and i was like i literally don't i i do not <laughs> but you're like we have completely different faces <laughs> yeah i'm like we are not the same baby like we have blonde hair and when i moved to nashville to do music as a blonde it was just like oh you're trying to be taylor swift are you the next taylor swift i'm like no I'm the first Juliana Hale. Like, why do yeah. I have to be the the blonde? The blonde. Like, when Nashville came out, Hayden Panettiere, the show Nashville. Oh my gosh. Okay, you kind of do. Thought look like I her, was. Though. I do look like her. I really you do look, look like her. her. And so I actually had someone take a picture of me and like ask me to like sign something, and I was like, I'm not Hayden Panettiere. <laughs> <laughs> I'm really not. You're like. I don't know. I think people want to. It's almost how people relate to things. Is like they want to put you in like this. But I don't feel like people do that with male artists. I agree. I definitely agree. I feel like when you ask someone, like, what does Tame Impala remind you of? They're like, psych rock, like psychedelic rock music. Yeah. They're not like Led Zeppelin because Tame Impala has countless licks that are eerily similar to Led Zeppelin. Mm -hmm. However, you ask, what does Gaga remind you of? Everyone says Madonna. Yep. Madonna and Gaga have very different artists. I don't even see that, to be honest. I've heard that. Maybe too, in the like, very beginning, but like that was maybe. a whole fucking thing. It's like, it's like, I don't know. I just, I find it so much more often with female artists get compared to other female artists versus actually, males don't. I actually saw that on Twitter today. Uh, Lotto released a new song with um, Lou Kahlo, who's an up and coming artist. And it was very like, a very like, upbeat kind of disco music and literally every single comment was like this is like half Lizzo half Dua Lipa meets like Doja Cat and I'm like oh and 
okay like, they make that same kind of music lotto is in her own lane too dude lotto just didn't lotto just win a bunch of grammys and like has been fucking putting up she's numbers been popping and she also writes for other artists and stuff and then luke yeah. Lotto, like that is how her other sound kind of sounded was like that very like poppy dancey and this is what i think people that aren't at music don't understand is it's we're all in the same world like i feel like a lot of times people will look at something and then look at something else and be like oh they copied that and it's like no it might seem like that but it's not that's not how that actually works people like life imitates art we're all on the same planet like yeah i'm not gonna say like oh i'm the first you know girl that's what it disco cowgirl rhinestone cowgirl fuck no you know uh i did it for a little bit and that's not really my aesthetic to be real anymore yeah and um well i'm sorry for introducing you earlier as oh no it's cool no because it also is like i am that i am a disco cowgirl because the character is kind of you know kitty cohen is a rootin tootin outlaw but kitty cohen's you know she she didn't get thrown in the pen yet so she's still fucking figuring it out yeah um and i like that that's kind of the first thing i did but you know i know that my fans and people that are into it are going to accept when i start now that i have started putting out more rock based music like bad bad liar and rotten tomatoes like because those are my real my real inspirations are like the cure um you know alt j like that's the music i listen to by myself how do you feel about influencers like the D'Amelios and like Addison Rae making music? How does that make you feel? I'm going to be honest and say it annoys me. <laughs> it does annoy me. However, I do think Addison Rae is a star. Really? I think she is. Yes. I think Addison Rae is like 80s, 90s, early 90s supermodel meets like she's just like the girl you want to be best friends with. Like, she's I just love her vibe. Yeah. Um. I think she excels in everything she's done. Um, however, I don't think that the pop star route was necessary. And I don't think it's necessarily even a choice of a lot of these kids. I think it's, or sorry, calling them kids isn't really fair. It's not like I'm that old, but like um, these people. Yeah, I don't think it's like necessary. I think that they had what they needed to. I think honestly, it's a lot of their teams being like, oh, Addison, like, this is just another revenue stream. This is just another way for you to brand and da da da. And it's like, you know, her she did, I think, decent with her music. I think honestly was good. Um the Demilios, I don't know. I think the Demilios are like it's just so played out and scripted that like i don't get it like seeing the kardashians and how raw and everything like it's like they're trying to redo the kardashians but they're not doing it correctly like um i don't think charlie needed to do music at all i think dixie has a great voice i just i don't know who i i don't know who told her to do that I do feel bad they do get a lot of hate when they put out music so like as much as it kind of like annoys me it also just annoys me because like it's awesome that's the nepotism the thing it really is because it's like i know that they made themselves the platform and that's beautiful and that's great i just feel like sometimes artists who have been grinding at like music and are in it for the music can feel so jilted when they are taking spots on the playlist they're they're taking festivals. spots at coachella yes literally they're working yeah. with like certain people and whatnot and it's like wow so i guess it's kind of a shortcut like maybe we should have done that but that's just not like authentic and as you said it is just kind of like another revenue stream for them in my opinion i don't know them personally i could totally be wrong maybe they always wanted to do music but it definitely feels almost like inorganic it's not like a lot of them even post anything music related before they come i mean i think there are tiktok artists who have made the transition that are sick like tate mccray she's she's for real she's legit she's good but yeah some of it's like it's like there's it's it's like the most overwhelming thing is doing everything it's like if you're a dancer and a performer and a you know influencer that's your bag get in your bag you know it's like I'm an artist I'm a musician I'm a singer I can play kind of play instruments (laughs) play enough to like write music and like play a little bit um but like I'm not gonna sit here and like get in my producer bag like super hard or like I don't know it's not to say that there aren't people that could do everything but it's like it's it's just an overwhelming thing and it kind of like muddies the waters when someone tries to solidify like what you are as a as a um you know as an influencer and artist it's like hard for them to decide so 
I don't think Charlie needed to put out a song. I was very kind of like, oh God. And it does annoy me. Like, cause it's like, I know amazing artists like this group 99 Neighbors. They've been on the fucking grind forever. I met them in Nashville through my lawyer. I'm like, I would love to see them on Coachella, but yeah. Dixie D'Amelio's up there, even though the girls put out three fucking songs. It's like, that's not fair. They're not paying you know? dues, kind of. It's, like, yeah, I mean, and, and it's not to, fair. They didn't, they didn't like pay their dues. Before. And like their first show is going to be for like 10,000 people. And I just feel like that's another thing with like TikTok artists um, that I kind of worry almost about, like people that blow up on the app and they've made like a few songs they've never played a show before. I kind of worry about like what their first touring experience is going to be like because they've never experienced life on the road, how stressful it is, how hard it is on your body, how you need to like find ways to eat well, just like loading in, loading out late, set times. I'm wondering how the sound guys are going to feel about them if they don't like speak the language. And I honestly feel happy that like I've had, I've had shows in front of like two people. I've had shows in front of like thousands of people. And I am pretty glad that my first shows were not in front of thousands. I don't know. I definitely yeah. I feel like there's going to be a pretty large learning curve for them. And I worry a little bit. Yeah. And I'm interested to see what history writes down as like this era of music music, because it's like we're in the era of like everyone thinks they can be an artist and everyone technically can. Yeah. Anyone can get on DistroKid and put a song on Spotify, which I am fully supportive of. Yeah. Like, you know, it's it's like anyone can do it. However, you don't know who you are when you're 18. You don't know who you are when you're 17. You don't even know who you are when you're 21 a lot of times. Yeah. So it's like it's a lot of times these people are going to, you know, have their day in the sun and then it's going to fade away. Like think about um, I think his name was Arizona Vares, like that Roxanne song. Oh, yeah, yeah. Huge song. Never, never got another he like you know that rap song i forget it i don't know well the thing it's is like, like you said like roxanne and like first you said his name and i didn't know and then you said like that roxanne song and i was like oh can't like that no not you don't have to put on the red light not that one. Oh, i know i know you're talking about the other roxanne the one that was like popping on tiktok yeah i'm just gonna say that like i feel like it's so interesting how a song can be yeah i know this yeah 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 he hasn't that's put out literally like anything in, since then. Yeah. And like, I didn't it's, even know his like, name, which is crazy because that song was huge. And I listen, I li I've heard that song and I did not know his name, honestly. And I hate saying that, but it's such an interesting culture of like music can be huge and you don't even know who the artist is. Yeah. So we'll see. But I think time will tell that this everybody who is meant to do this for life, it will it will happen. You know, it's going to happen differently than it did 10 years ago but it is going to happen. I think it's important for artists nowadays who are artists and who love to make music to utilize the tools we have. Don't just say, I don't want to do this TikTok. It's gimmicky. It is. We know it is. Yeah. However, this is a way for you to have access to thousands, millions of fans of that you yeah. literally would never have regardless. I, I don't want to go on fucking submit hub and pitch no. it to 14 blogs that I don't even, aren't even big. Like, TikTok is very much a tool and I think artists need to use it yeah, um, and, and not get intimidated by the fact that they're not a Nepo baby turned artist. Yeah. And I you feel know? like when I TikTok first came out, like I had such a negative mindset about it. Like I didn't want to do it. I felt like I had to, I didn't know how to do it. And it's like the moment that I shifted my perspective to be like, wow, this is an amazing tool. Like artists have never been able to have such reach because like the old Instagram algorithm, you only really people saw your stuff that followed you. And so this new algorithm where it's like you can reach anybody who might like your stuff, I think is amazing. And I think a lot of artists would benefit from really almost being grateful for it and like seeing it as an opportunity, honestly. So I agree. I think TikTok is great. Mm -hmm. I mean, I think it definitely can be stressful because it's like you feel like you're watering down your music into some like seven second sound bite. That's a whole like it's hard not to feel gimmicky, but I think there are really authentic ways. I think there's a lot of talent on TikTok. I think performing on there singing just like if you just make it about the music I, I don't think it's gimmicky I think if you can just be authentic people will relate to that because I don't think Gen Z likes gimmicky it, well they do like some of the gimmicks like oh my gosh my ex-boyfriend is in the crowd and I'm like no he wasn't he, he literally wasn't like 
he was you put that caption over your image okay can i also say something that i hate that tiktok does yes. is okay we've actually done this before okay what did we do but oh, it was oh. it was cute because it's authentic but when people show people their songs for the yes. first time i'm like girl this is so awkward like yeah. I, i'm like is it because i'm an artist and i know how it feels to show someone your song for the Maybe. first time but just like watching them be like like I'm like this is so cringe. Like I cannot watch this right now. Okay, literally one time on this topic, I saw this girl post this Mother's Day post, and she was like, "Oh my gosh, showing my mom this song I wrote for her for Mother's Day for the first time." Her mom is sobbing, crying, like it's all emotional. So I go look up this song. It had been out for two years. I was like, "You had your mama acting. You had your mom acting on on the TikTok on the gram. Like give her somebody get this woman an Emmy." literally get her an emmy like i couldn't believe it i was like you had your mom crying in this video and you came out with the song two years ago so either your mom sucks and didn't listen to your song for two years that you wrote for her or you know this is this is not it baby oh god true that giving, um smoke screen it's giving smoke screen for sure all right do we feel like i feel like we talked a lot about like creative vision and everything so i feel yeah. like we can we can do the we games have, all right we can do the games we have do you think a controversial mu- music opinion upcoming okay. projects i'm gonna do the upcoming projects at the end so that it's kind of like okay, okay, okay. Into, like your socials and everything yeah um, oh yeah so once we can do the games let's okay, do let's it do the game. okay all right so i you're my first guest and i want to have a little bit of fun on the podcast so we're gonna play some games that i concocted um i love a game <laughs> Okay, so I need to put on a timer, and I want to see if you can name 10 artists that start with a K in 30 seconds. There's no prize. It's just fun. So, okay. Okay, okay. okay. three, two, one. Kendrick Lamar, Kanye West, Kid Cudi, Kaylani. Yes. Kim Petras. Okay. Casey Musgraves. Kurt Vile, Karungbin, got five Corn, seconds. and Kitty Cohen. <laughs> Amazing. Crushed it, killed it. You definitely count as an artist. I count. Okay. And since you're Kitty Cohen, I don't know. I, you're a cat person. You have a cat. So we, we're, we're going to make you, if you can guess ten, or name, 10 breeds of cats in 30 seconds. Okay, I'm going to try. Okay, three, two, one. Blue Russian, Siamese, Calico, Tabby, Mancoon, Bengal. I'm like screaming. Um, That's all I got. I got six. <laughs> Amazing. You know what? <laughs> It's good. Ten seconds ahead of time. I think, I think you did better than I would. Honestly, like I don't even have a list of some cats. Like oh, I could have done those like naked cats, the hairless oh, yeah. cats. Is a black cat a breed of cat? Like, I don't know what kind of breed. Me either. It can't be called just the black breed. Black cat. Yeah. Like what? The black okay. cats. Okay. This is what we're gonna look up afterwards. I have some would you rather. Would you rather listen to a song with great vocals and terrible lyrics or terrible vocals and great lyrics? Terrible vocals, great lyrics. Shout out Bob Dylan. I was literally about to yeah. say shout out Bob no. Dylan. I, I could give a shit about the... I mean, I know this is probably because I'm more of a songwriter than a, than a vocalist. Uh, well, I, yeah, I'm a, I love writing songs. I don't think I'm like a vocal diva by any means. We're not uh, like I'm not. I don't consider myself that either. Yeah. Yeah, I'm not like a vocal diva. I'm not like an Ariana Grande. Um, but because of that, yeah, I'm I'm I love lyrics. Good lyrics make up for so much, like in my opinion. I agree. I agree. Uh, I vocals. Like, well, even just look at Taylor Swift's early career. I, I think that Taylor Swift's grown a lot as a vocalist. But we, I mean, we can all be honest. I think she just she wasn't the strongest vocalist when she came out, but her songwriting was on point it was relatable the story was told i was crying i'm like eight years old and i'm as if i've been heartbroken 17 times just another picture to burn oh girl tim mcgraw i mean he got some my guitar i was obsessed when she first came out i was in love she was so good she was it was weird because i was obsessed with taylor swift and my chemical romance at the same time my ipod was just like 
what are you doing <laughs> i love that don't go together sweetheart. i love that would you rather listen to a friday by rebecca black on repeat for a full week or not be able to listen to your favorite artist for a year i can get down with some rebecca black for a full week to friday i could get down okay i could get down to friday rebecca black's fire now I know she people is. Are yeah. so, people are so gross. They're like, when did she get hot? I'm like, well, she's not 13 anymore. Fucking weirdo. Anyways. So weird. And they're like, oh my gosh, the Friday girl. Like, why do you make music? I'm like, you do realize it's been like. She's good. A decade. Like. <laughs> yeah, she's good. Also good on. She had the TikTok formula before TikTok. Like making some low-key cringy viral song. Like now we have the alphabet songs and stuff. And arguably it's worse. Like. Just like the counting songs. If I hear one more song that's like going through the days of the week or like the months of the year or just like one, this, two, this. I'm just like, I know what you're doing. You you want a TikTok trend. You're going to get it. That's great. Why wow. are you doing this? Do they Seven walk things the I hate about you. You're lame. You're vain. Okay. You're insecure. Go Lee Kate came out with a her life. But like that was a Miley Cyrus song. Yeah. Let's leave Basically, that. it was the same thing. Oh, I was singing the Miley Cyrus one. Oh, absolutely. I don't know I mean, the other one. Iconic. Literally. I, oh, Leah Kate made like the 10 things I hate about you. Like 10, you're toxic. Nine, you're something. Hey, seven, you something, something. Yeah, yeah. <laughs> yeah. Go off, queen. Go off, queen. Get your bag. Get your bag. Yeah. All right. My last game is going to be a, a rapid fire this or that. You can only keep one or listen to one for just like ever in your mind okay so we'll start light coffee or tea tea dolly parton or miley cyrus miley cyrus i, I love dolly but it's I, just I know, not it's my hard. gin it's hard yeah miley yeah. cyrus is a queen love her ice spice or coil ray coil ray she's putting out the box she really is that little player song coil ray's good as a good rapper ice spice is fine as hell and she She's got swag, but uh, I don't really th like think she's the best rapper, to be honest. Like, yeah, she's not vibe. my pref preference of rapper, yeah. I guess I could say. But I think she's very, very cute and very cool and has she's her songs are bops. Right. But yeah, I just absolutely. don't listen to them in myself by myself. So I see you. I see you. This one's yep. kind of unrelated, but related. If you're an OG, Halsey versus the 1975. Uh, forever. <laughs> dude i'm gonna have to give it to my girl halsey oh uh, i know it's the so hopeless amazing. fountain kingdom album stays in my Yo, shit that, that album was just yeah. the best out walls could talk why is it not longer why is it not longer I that know. little violin song oh, i know i love her she's amazing I love her. she's coming out with she a, is an artist yes ma'am she is she just released she, uh she posted today that she's coming out with like her own version of die for me that post Malone song that she featured on i'm excited i want to hear it i'm excited too have you ever seen her live no she's really good i got to play a festival yeah. where i played the stage after her which didn't make sense to be honest like i thought they had it wrong but i wasn't going to question it too much and so i got to see her a little bit before my sound check and she's amazing so i bought a ticket to her show and i like saw her yeah <laughs> She's good. She's amazing. Beyonce or Rihanna? Rihanna. Me too. Me too. We're gonna get we're gonna get toasted for that. But beer or liquor? We are gonna get roasted for that. They're gonna come for us. I don't care, Rihanna. Hey, hive. I'm sorry, girl. Rihanna. It's she's an icon. So, so is Beyonce. Be Beyonce's an icon too. Beyonce is very. <laughs> she's the. Sh we don't gotta say. I don't want to have to choose. Know. But I listen to Rihanna's music more than Beyonce. Me too. Yeah, that's where I'm at. Beyonce's definitely, they're both great performers. We, we don't have to speak for Beyonce. Everybody knows. Mm -mm. TikTok or Instagram? Dude, TikTok. Really? Because Instagram freaking sucks now. <laughs> like, do you know how long I've had Instagram? I got Instagram before anybody in my high school got Instagram. I got roasted because I would post on it. Oh and God. like, I literally worked so hard for my little blue check. I've worked so hard for my little 11K. Girl. And your girl is all of a sudden literally getting like 300 likes on stuff. I'm like, Barely. where did every where did everyone go? Like, I know. I used to <laughs> get, like, like, get no likes. Like a thousand to two thousand likes on stuff. And it's like, does my what? 
the heck? I'm like, I'm fighting for three. I get 300 and I'm like, oh, wow. I did cool. good. Yeah. Like pictures, impossible. Reels, you'll reel either get like, for me, I've had reels get like 1.5 million views before. And then the next one will get 800 views, which is the same with TikTok. And I'm like, Ooh why yeah did you do tiktok that? i just like how you have access to people that you don't know i also think tiktok's really funny like i think the comments are hilarious and like i just honestly tiktok has really grown on me i do doom scroll often and i actually have had to undownload the app and you know do stuff but i put on a timer I'm, for it because i it's addicting yeah. i don't even realize i've been on there for like an hour you're just like, I'm, yeah. I'm deep in like someone's drama in Ohio. Like they're, they're breaking up with their boyfriend. Somebody cheated. And like, I'm knee deep in it. I've watched seven videos of theirs. I'm reading the comments. Like, why am I doing this? I don't know these mm -hmm. people. They're not even famous. I'm just like, oh, this is so interesting. And then I'm like, mm -hmm. oh, I need to leave my house. Okay. Let's see. Fletcher or Charlie XCX? Ugh. <laughs> uh. I don't know because I love Charlie and I, dude, I love Fletcher. I I'm thinking I, Fletcher. If I want to say. open for Fletcher. Fletcher, oh, Carrie. That would be perfect. Carrie Fletcher, if you see me right now, you need to understand that I would be so good before you and I will change it however you want me to change it. Just please let me go on tour with you. Um, <laughs> I love that. You're love freaking pain. iconic. Um, oh, uh, but I'm going to have to say Charlie XCX. I see you. I see you. I Both just listen to Charlie. Charlie and Kim Petros are like two of my most streamed artists. Okay, so. Right. Hyper. The vibes. Jack Harlow or Young Gravy? Jack Harlow. Me too. Yeah. Young Gravy. I feel like, have you seen that St. Levant artist? He's like, he's the one who raps in like Arabic and French and stuff. Oh yeah. He's like the French Jack Harlow vibes. Yeah, basically. I was going to say that, but I wasn't sure if you'd know him. I feel like he's going to come up for sure. Not that Jack Harlow is like not coming. Yeah, I played a festival with Jack Harlow right before What's Popping came out, and I'm so sad that I didn't like go hang out with him or something. <laughs> he's, <laughs> a what did I do? he's a cutie. He's a he's a cutie. No comment. Um, my man. Knows this is... <laughs> Juliana's <laughs> married, guys. She's engaged. What'd you say? You're engaged. <laughs> Not my hair getting cut. <laughs> oh my gosh. Okay, Stevie Nicks or Janet Joplin. Janice Joplin. Janice. I don't know why I said Janet to be honest. Oh, it auto corrected <laughs> on my notes. So I just was reading straight off the notes. And I, was like, Janet oh, oh, oh. I was like, um, I'm going right. to say, I'm going to probably say Stevie Nicks. Yeah. yeah. Janice, I'm so sorry. I did not mean to say Janet. I know that you're all good. Just know that I know that her name is Janice. I know Joplin. you know. I know <laughs> Your you girl know. was trusting the notes. Okay. I picked Stevie Nicks too. Uh, Olivia yeah. Rodrigo or Willow? Willow. Willow. I feel like I'm I sorry. I just. I don't that's not hidden for you that like her album like aged me for sure like when it came out and everyone was like it, like Olivia Rodrigo had a chokehold on everyone I was like I genuinely like can't relate to this music like I just it's good but it's just so like Disney like yeah it's like van it's like vanilla paramore it's uh, like diet paramore. diet paramore I'm like I'm like this is not her vocals. She's got great vocals. I, I agree, though. I she is like a star. Like, oh, she is she a star. Is a and she star. has a great demographic. Like, she's killing it. Yeah. I, I agree, though. I did Olivia Rodrigo it. slays the game, but she's. I just don't listen to her music. Yeah. I, we're, I, I just, just don't older. like it. We're, like, we're not even that old, but I feel like, I don't know. It's like once you grow up. I'm just not 18. Like, yeah, we're just not 18. That's it. Yeah. Like, once you, you know. go past, like, the age of 22, I feel like your life is just a lot different. I am interested to see Olivia Rodrigo's future projects so i think that i will grow to love her I, as an artist i just think her out the gate it was just a little not my style That's i feel it. like she also had to kind of bridge that gap between like disney and wherever she wants to go so i think oh, there's yeah. that aspect too for sure definitely we only have a few more spotify or apple music spotify even though we don't get paid at all for any I know, of it I feel but like i'm sleeping with the enemy i'm literally like i should use a different service and here i am using spotify <laughs> But they have great playlists. Like, I love the little, like, Spotify wraps that they do. I just, like, they did that time capsule at the beginning of the year. Did you see that? You could, like, make a time capsule playlist. Mm -hmm. Did you do that? Mm -hmm. I did. Too. Yeah. I and then um, Red Hot Chili Peppers or Jack White? Red Hot Chili Peppers. It's hard. For sure. But I 
I agree. I agree. I feel like we're on the same page here. This one's kind of random, but Sydney Sweeney or Alexa Demi? Alexis Demi. Alex yeah. Yeah. <laughs> yeah. A queen. <laughs> Come on, Maddie. Come I on, know. Maddie. Oh, my gosh. I cannot wait for the new season that we're going to get in a decade. Yeah. I think Sydney Sweeney's dope, too. Honestly, they're she's both. a baddie. Like, I'm not trying to yeah, pick women against sick. women. We're just playing this or that. Yeah, like, this is, like, great. just if I had to choose. Literally. And I pick things that are hard. Like, I love all of the things on this list. That's why it's this. It wouldn't be this or that if I was, like, Alexa Demi or some actress you've never heard of. Yeah, I love like, everybody on this thing except... Netflix. Oh, Netflix. Screw versus you, Hulu. Netflix. Yeah. Too expensive. <laughs> $20 a month for the worst shows. I got to be honest. I don't pay for my necklace. I'm on somebody else's account. So I didn't know it was $20 a month. And now I kind of feel bad. It's so expensive. I stopped. I mean, I use HBO Max. Oh, you didn't even say Netflix. Sorry, guys. We have a list. We have a list. Yeah, you guys aren't in the club with the list. We have a list. Uh, you are in the club. And we all eat vibes for breakfast. Hey, man. I mean, why not? I want to eat vibes for breakfast. I kind of did. I was hungover. <laughs> I did a photo shoot last night. My mom just, like, kept making us, like, little drinks, like, rosé. Then I had a margarita. And I was celebrating something that I'll tell you about at a later date. And so I just didn't think about it. And now I woke up, and I was like, oh. <laughs> <laughs> like, I'm hungover. Because I never drink, really. And so no bueno. No bueno. Yeah. Okay. So, oh, Miss Kitty Cohen, can you tell us about any upcoming projects you have going on? What's next on your radar? Yes. Um, I have literally so many things, like, in the works um, as far as songs. I'm basically working on an album. I have been working on an album for almost a year now, um, and I'm so excited. Bad Bad Liar is going to be on it. Rotten Tomatoes is going to be on it. It is my baby. Um all the singles are basically almost finished. So we're looking at an April release for the singles to start coming out. Mm -hmm. um, and then hopefully the whole album will be put out by the summertime. Oh my goodness. So That's I'm cool. really excited. I'm doing a lot of shadow work right now. I haven't got the opportunity to post a lot of things and show like the, my fans and like my followers what I'm doing. Yeah. Cause I don't want to give too much away. And I'm like the worst about that. Like I will literally be like, fuck it. I'm just going to post it. And my manager's like, kitty, like it's kind of ruins the whole rollout when you do that. And I'm like, you're not wrong, Mike. You're not wrong. So Mike's keeping you, keeping you on. He's right. He is right. It's, you know, you got to well, do super excited for the rollout. April is, I can't wait for April, but it'll, it'll come quicker than yeah, April's coming right around this week. We're finishing up some record, some songs, some singles on the record. Awesome. And then next week, we're going to wrap up a lot. Um, and then I'm going to be going to Europe in March to re record and work on some stuff. Nice. So, yeah. Nice. And then by the time I'm back, hopefully we'll we'll be having a single for you guys. Yo, I'm so excited. I'm glad I caught you before you blow up. You know, don't forget about me. Never. <laughs> Bestie. Bestie. That's the energy. That's the energy. <laughs> well, this is true. This isn't just like a gimmick, guys. We actually yeah, are like we, basically yeah. best friends. <laughs> <laughs> we hang out. Kitty Cohen. I don't know why I keep saying Miss Kitty Cohen. It just sounds. Because I'm a lady. Right, baby. Yeah, exactly. <laughs> Thank you so much for being my first podcast guest. It was amazing. I'm so glad it was a friend of mine. <laughs> Very made it a lot easier. And I want you to plug yourself. Tell us where we can find you. Hell yeah. So uh, Kitty Cohen, K I T T. Y C O E N. This is my merch. Love it. Love it. You can buy it on shop K Cohen C O E N once again dot com. Um, you can find my music on literally every streaming platform. And you can find all of my links in the bio of my Instagram. I am at Kitty Cohen, K I T T Y C O E N on everything. And so will... check me out, roast me, do your do your thing, do your worst. Oh my goodness. And I will put all of those links in the show notes of the podcast so that people can easily like click on that and everything too. Yep. So awesome. Thank you so much for your time today. Thank you. All right. Stay groovy. <laughs>